Hello students, welcome to Smart Engineering Tutorials. Firstly, I would like to tell you that due to some personal reasons, I was not able to upload my videos for the past two weeks. So, please excuse me for that. And uh, in my last video, I started the lecture series of the subject Real SI as per IP University syllabus. And uh, in my last video, I covered the MOS structure. It's a uh, the diagram I discussed about the three layers that is the gate, oxide and the uh, substrate with the oxide in between the two and also I discussed about some numerical equations, mathematical equations which can be used for finding out the number of electrons, holes, mass action law. In continuation to the MOS structure, I will be discussing in detail about the energy band diagrams uh, used in the MOS structure. So as it's clear that the MOS structure is formed by using three layers with the metal gate on the top and the substrate that is the P type silicon to use for the substrate at the bottom and the SiO2 layer or the we call it as the insulating silicon dioxide layer as a sandwich in between the two. So here we are going to see the energy band diagram of the p-type substrate since it is necessary that uh, we should know about the energy bands of all the three materials or the three components of the MOS structure which are used to form the MOS system. So as we can see here in the diagram these uh, are the energy levels and uh, here I have written the uh, names of these energy levels. So at the bottom we can see EV which is the valence band and this EC is the conduction band. And, and between EC and EV is the band gap of 1.1 electron volt and in the center this PI should be in the center of EC and EV and it is the intrinsic Fermi level. And uh, since here we are using a P-type substrate, so the equilibrium uh, Fermi level due to this P-type uh, doping which is uh, used, uh, we are using the trivalent atoms for doping here. So, in this case, the equilibrium Fermi level lies just above the balance band. But if we uh, make a n-type uh, substrate using the pentavalent impurities, in that case, the equilibrium Fermi level li will lie just below the conduction band. So, this actually, this uh, equilibrium Fermi level depends upon the type of doping and its concentration. So, here, another level, energy level, which we can see is PO which is the free space and here Q and Xi you can call it Q Xi this amount of energy is actually called the uh, electron affinity and it is the energy required for the electrons to move from the conduction band to the free space and I'll be discussing this term in detail further so let's move ahead what all I have talked just now I have already made points here that the band gap between EC and EV is 1.1 electron volt. The location of equilibrium Fermi level depends upon the doping type and concentration and the Fermi potential phi F. Now you can see here Q into phi F P. P just denotes for the P type substrate and in general if I talk about this phi F it is called the Fermi potential and it is a function of temperature as well as doping. This phi f that is a Fermi potential is actually the difference between the intrinsic Fermi level and the equilibrium Fermi level obtained due to doping. So as you can see here I have mentioned this due to phi f p. So if we uh, want to write the equation for this phi f that is the Fermi potential it is the difference between EF and EI. 
So 5F is equals to EF minus EI upon Q. And there in the diagram I have written Q into 5FP. Actually this is potential and uh, I have multiplied by Q to make it into energy. Since this is the difference in the energy levels of EI and EF. This EI and this EI and EF. So, 5F is actually EF minus EI upon Q. This is the first equation. And here, uh, to make it more elaborate, for P time, since the equilibrium Fermi level lies below EI, therefore, this uh, 5F will be a negative for the P time substrate. And for N type, the equilibrium Fermi level lies just below the conduction band that is above EI. Therefore, EF minus EI for N type will be positive. Hence, we say that 5F or the Fermi potential is positive for the N type semiconductors. Now, this Fermi potential in another form. For P type, this 5FP, this P is the substrate type uh, suffix I have used here. So, 5FP can also be obtained. This is in terms of difference in energy levels and here it is in the form of um, some constants and uh, uh, doping levels. So, 5FP is equals to KT by Q ln Ni upon Na. Na is the number of acceptor atom. This Ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration. And uh, similarly, for the N type, this 5 Fn, that is the Fermi potential for N type is equal to Kt upon Q ln Nd upon Ni. Nd is the number of donor atoms and Ni is again that the intrinsic carrier concentration. And this Kt and Q are the familiar quantities. Boltzmann constant is K. Q is the electronic charge. T is the absolute temperature. So these equations 1, 2 and 3, they are actually uh, used for finding the 5F. And the same thing which I just discussed above that 5F is positive for N type and negative for P type. Electron affinity I have just uh, discussed for the silicon. It is written as Q into Xi. I have already mentioned the diagram. And it is, it is actually the dif potential difference between the conduction band level and the free space level. So it is the energy required for electron to move from conduction band to the free space. Now, I also talked about work function that is Q into 5 S. Sorry, I haven't talked about. Now, we'll discuss it here. This work function is Q into 5 S. And it is actually the energy required for an electron to move from the Fermi level to the free space. So, depending upon the doping, it will be uh, seen that where is the equilibrium Fermi level. And from that level, the energy required for the electron to move from there to the free space is actually the work function and this q into phi s it can be written as first of all the electron will move from uh, Fermi level to the conduction band and from conduction band to the free space so it is actually ec minus ef difference between the two and plus the electron affinity the energy for the electron to move from conduction band to the free space. So actually it is as we can see in the diagram work function is actually for this case it is the electron will move from this level to this level. So actually this is the total energy required and it is equals to this plus this minus this. So what we can see here is written in the form of an equation. Electron affinity plus EC minus EF. Now, so this was about the uh, substrate. Next moving to the second layer is the in between the metal gate and the substrate in between is the SiO2 layer. So the insulating SiO2 layer between substrate and the gate, it has a large band gap and that is of 8 electron volt and its electron affinity is about 0.95 electron volt. And the work function for an aluminium gate is represented as Q into 5M and it is about 4.1 electron volt. 
Now this all I have which I have talked about I can I have just uh, mentioned in the form of a diagram here. It is this. This energy band diagram is showing the three components of the MOS system as three individual uh, system or components. So as we can see here this is the metal gate in between is the oxide layer and at the bottom is the semiconductor P type here in this case. So this Q5M is 4.1 electron volt which is the work function and for the oxide the band gap is 8 electron volt plus this electron affinity is 0.95 electron volt and this we have already discussed in detail. Uh, here I have just mentioned the value of the electron affinity which is 4.15 electron volt. Now as we have already seen these uh, three components separately, their energy band diagram separately. So now these three components they have to be uh, brought together into uh, physical contact to form the MOS system. And uh, the Fermi levels for this of all the three materials they must line up in order to form the system. And which this system behaves like a MOS capacitor with the two plates as the gate and the substrate with dielectric SiO2 in between. Now because of the work function difference between the metal and semiconductor these two have uh, different work functions. So for this reason when they are brought closer a voltage drop occurs across the whole MOS system and this voltage drop it can be seen uh, in as a part of it can be seen as the built-in voltage drop across the SiO2 layer and the rest voltage drop can be seen at the silicon surface. Now we can see it in the, the help of a diagram here. This is the whole uh, uh, three layers brought in physical contact. This is the metal oxide and this is the semiconductor. I have shown this a ramp in between. This shows that the substrate has a higher a work function than that of the metal. For this reason when they are all three are brought into physical contact their uh, Fermi levels are shown here to line up and uh, here we can see some changes being uh, uh, done or the, there is a, some curve at the surface and this surface is what? This is an interface at which the oxide and the substrate meet. This is that interface. So at the surface, the energy bands are curved. This shows that actually the energy band inside, deep inside the substrate are not affected, but at the interface they are really affected. So I have uh, made some points here that the resulting combined energy band diagram of the MOS system as you can see here and the equilibrium Fermi levels of silicon substrate and the metal gate are at the same potential which I have just shown they are at the same potential. The bulk Fermi level is not much affected by the band bending. Band bending just happens at the interface and not inside the bulk uh, substrate. So we can say or we can uh, elaborate on this point is that at the interface or at the surface the Fermi level as we can see here at this uh, interface the Fermi level and the intrinsic level see they are just meeting so we can say that the uh, Fermi level at the surface it moves closer to the intrinsic Fermi level. The Fermi potential at the surface is also called surface potential fibers and it is obvious that the surface potential is less than the Fermi potential of the bulk since at the surface you can see that the bands are bending but in the bulk or inside the substrate they are not affected. So with this I end up my this uh, lecture and in the next lecture we will be discussing a numerical on this topic itself that how the uh, potential difference 
due to the work function difference between metal and the substrate. This voltage difference, how it is managed and how it is uh, distributed inside the SiO2. So we'll see and we'll look that in my next video. Till then, thank you and subscribe to my channel as well as share with your friends so that others can get benefit from this. Thank you.